Well, good morning and welcome everybody to today's service, our uh, online 11th of July service of worship to God. So welcome to you and we're so glad that you have joined us today. As we gather for worship this morning and as we come to the end of NADOC week, we acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we are meeting and we recognise their special cultural bonds with these lands. We commit to seeking the reconciliation between First and Second Nations peoples of this land and pray for this continuing process and those involved in it. And our opening hymn today is, And Can It Be That I Should Gain?
worship today is responsive and it comes from Psalm 24. And I'll put my glasses on so I can read. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false, and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord, and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Come one, come all. Let us worship this God. Let us seek his face. Let us praise him now in words of song and prayer. Let us hear from his word and let us be bathed always in his blessings. Amen. So let us pray. Who are we, O Lord, that all you want to do is bless us? We are your creation. We are your adopted children. And yet we often forget you and think of ourselves long before we think of you. And yet you still want to bless us richly and through your grace want to give us life eternal with you. Your love knows no boundaries so that through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, your son, we are redeemed from our own death. For this we give you our thanks and praise. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Ephesians, beginning at chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, we were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. For the stories from the founding of your church. Thanks be to God. And our hymn is I Know Whom I Have Believed In. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me. Slay! 
that we are in bondage to a view of the world that puts our compromise before your justice, that is unable to name the worth and wonder of all your children, that places people in positions that threaten the very soul of who they are, the soul that you see as unique and glorious. We confess that all too often we are unwilling to tell the truth of the ways in which even those who call upon your name do so for the sake of harm. We ask for your forgiveness. We pray for wholeness. We trust in the promise of your hope. Grant us, we pray, the courage to speak, the power to empower, and the mercy to love. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given his only son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. He has drawn those from every nation and culture who believe in his name into his family as children of God and has given them his Holy Spirit. Grant this Lord to us all and help us to grow as brothers and sisters in your universal family. Amen. So in the spirit of forgiveness and peace that has touched the hearts of people everywhere, let us make peace with those around us and as we light this candle, let us pray for peace in the world. Peace be with you. Our second reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, beginning at chapter 6, verse 14. So King Herod heard of Jesus' name because of the mission journey of his twelve disciples. Some people were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in Jesus. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, who I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John bound him and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. 
John said, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias, Herod's wife, said, I hate that baptizer. I want him dead. But Herod is too scared of him, for John is a holy man, and Herod protects him. For some reason, Herod likes to listen to what John says. Herod one day came and said, It's my birthday today and I'm having a big party. All my friends are coming and we are going to have a wonderful time. Everybody said, Hooray, we're going to the party. Herodias, who was Herod's daughter, came in and said, Let me dance for you, father. And she danced before him. Wonderful, wonderful, Herod said. I am so happy. Ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it to you, up to half of my kingdom, if you wish. Herodias, the daughter, ran to her mother, also Herodias, and said, Father said he will give me whatever I wish for. What shall I ask him? Her mother said, Ask for the head of John the Baptizer on a platter. Herodias went and said to Herod, I want the head of John the Baptist brought to me on a platter. Herod was a bit anxious. What have I done? I can't go back on my word, especially in front of all these people. But I don't want to kill John. But I must. Guards, bring me the head of the baptizer. The daughter Herodias came in with the head of John the Baptist on a platter. She went to her mother and said, Here, mother! Ha, 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 Herodias laughed. It is done. The Baptist is finished. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took John's body and laid it in a tomb. For the good news that Christ brings, thanks be to God. And our next hymn is Just a Closer Walk with Thee. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to Thee Just a closer walk with Thee Walk with Thee it, Jesus is my plea Is my plea Day Close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Through this world of toil and snares, if I falter. Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden shares? None but Thee, dear Lord, none but Thee. When my feeble life is o'er time for me will be no more 
Guide me gently, safely o'er to Thy kingdom shore, to Thy shore. Just a closer walk with Thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee. Let it be, dear Lord. Let it be. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, nearly 700 years before he was born, John the Baptist's arrival on earth was announced by the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. In chapter 40 of his book, Isaiah speaks of a voice that will cry out, and it will cry out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. That voice is the voice of John. To me, John the Baptist is one of the most important characters in the whole of the Bible. And his ministry is one that I believe that we all share in, that of pointing our fellow humans to Jesus Christ. The predicted birth of John is also announced in the first chapter of Luke's Gospel, when an angel says to John's father, the priest Zechariah, that Elizabeth, Zechariah's wife, will become pregnant, even though they were both quite aged. The angel added that the child will be filled with the Holy Spirit before it would be born and that it would be held as great in the sight of the Lord and will turn many of the people of Israel to their God. So a special child without a doubt, one with a future of serving the Lord. And there is something to this as John leapt for joy while in the womb when Elizabeth was visited by her also pregnant cousin, the Virgin Mary. Even while an unborn child, John recognised that he was in the presence of the Lord Jesus. And then the action moves forward to when John is doing what Isaiah had prophesied. John was the voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare for the coming of the Lord. He attracted thousands of people from all over who came to hear his message of repentance and to be baptised by him in the River Jordan. Religious authorities also came out to see him and were usually attacked by John for their hypocritical practices. You brood of vipers, he called them. Just as we should, John was calling for truth and honesty and justice from those in power. This is not always easy to do, especially in countries where power is held because of fear and oppression, where speaking out for justice can lead to death. One day, as John was baptising people with water, the Lord appears before him. John the Baptist instantly recognises who Jesus is. The scene is recorded in John the Evangelist's Gospel. John the Baptist sees Jesus coming towards him and says, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. 
And after John had baptised Jesus at Jesus' insistence, John said, I saw the Spirit descend on him like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. From this point on, John's ministry begins to recede as Jesus' ministry begins to rise. But it's not the last we see of John by any means. Next, we are told that John was standing with two of his disciples the following day. And again, he said those words, Here is the Lamb of God, as Jesus walked by. John's two disciples immediately heard this and they began to follow Jesus instead. This is what I mean when John points other people to Jesus. He's not trying to hang on to his followers. He's saying, here is the saviour of the world, follow him. And isn't that what all of us should be doing? We do not seek to gain our own disciples, but we do seek to show other people the effect loving Jesus and answering his call to follow him can have on someone's life. That is our primary aim as Christians. When next we come across John, he has been imprisoned by Herod, as we heard today from Mark's Gospel, for accusing Herod of being unlawful by marrying, marrying his brother's wife, Herodias. You kind of feel sorry for Herod, for although he suffered these accusations and we were told was perplexed by John, Herod had this grudging respect for him, seeing him as a righteous and holy man. A righteous and holy man, in other words, one who was in a right and good relationship with God and obedient to God. Again, John is modelling what we should seek for ourselves, to be obedient to God and to be in a right relationship with God. And being in this right relationship with God leads to John's death. I suppose, in a way, John becomes the first Christian martyr before any kind of understanding of Christianity was even thought of. Many people have died for their Christian faith. When they were threatened with death, they chose not to renounce their faith in Christ and to accept whatever happened to them. Martyrdom is a powerful concept and a challenging one. We think of the well-known Christians being fed to the lions by the Romans. Or we might think of the stoning of St Stephen, who refused to deny Christ when appearing before the Jewish council, as we are told in Acts. Or we might think of more modern times, such as portrayed in the film of Gods and Men, which I watched recently, when a group of Trappist monks in Muslim Algeria must decide whether to stay and help the poor as they had been doing, or escape and save their lives when a civil war erupts. It is an interesting exercise for all of us, when threatened with deny Jesus or die, which do we choose? John could have apologised to Herod and have been released. Stephen could have admitted that he was wrong, probably would have been flogged, but then also released. The Trappist monks could have abandoned the poor and fled to save their lives, but they didn't and they died. Which would you choose? Before he was beheaded, though, while in prison, John the Baptist displayed another characteristic that most Christians do, that of doubt. In St Matthew's Gospel, messengers from John come to Jesus and ask him one simple question. Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? You may remember Jesus' reply. Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. In other words, yes, I am the one. So where do our doubts rise from? From the evil we see in the world? 
from our hopes and dreams and prayers not answered as we would wish, or various struggles in our everyday life. Humanity does evil things because they choose to. We have free will so that we can make these choices on our own. Our hopes and dreams simply may be unrealistic. For, as, for instance, as you may know, uh, Mary and I love to watch some reality TV shows. And in a lot of these, the contestants say they are doing whatever particular show it is to let their kids know that you can do anything. If you try hard enough, you can do anything. Well, no. You cannot win the voice if your singing voice is like dragging fingernails down a blackboard. You can't win Survivor if it is that you can't tolerate being cold, wet and hungry. And struggles in everyday life can be lessened if you seek help and place your burdens at the foot of Jesus' cross. John the Baptist kept his faith despite his doubts and he gave up his life for this faith. John the Baptist is without doubt a key figure in the Bible, a righteous and holy man, a man whose life had been, been prophesied about hundreds of years before his birth and who is still an important figure in the church today as he reminds us who call ourselves Christian that despite our fears and doubts, it is our life's work to seek justice for all and to repent of our sins but more importantly, to point others to Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us pray. Loving God, we give thanks for the life and ministry of John the Baptist and those who have chosen not to deny their faith, but to choose death in your name for the love of you. Help us to remain strong in our faith when doubts arise and when challenges come before us, guide us to you in all that we do. In Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. So, let us now bring in our prayers of community to God. God of glory, we give you thanks for the wonders of nature and the rich diversity of human life. We pray for your world and its people, for careful stewardship of your creation, that its beauty may be preserved and its bounty shared, justly among all. For an end to violence, exploitation and corruption, that your people may be governed wisely and live together in peace. God of glory, hear our prayer. We give you thanks that before the foundation of the world, you chose us for your own and destined us for adoption as your children. We pray for your church, for all who confess your name, that we may be united in love for you and for one another. For all who minister in your name, that we may faithfully proclaim your gospel in sacrament, word and deed. God of glory, Hear our prayer. We give you thanks that in your Son we have seen your face revealed, and then that in your little ones we see the face of God. We pray for those in need, for the sorrowing and those who are sick, that they may be comforted and find relief from their pain. For those in anxiety, depression or despair, that they may find encouragement, hope and peace. God of glory, hear our prayer. And for this community in particular, Lord, we bring before you those known to us in need of prayer. For Sandra and her niece Desiree. For Jim and Grant and Cyril. For Jill and Ian. For Ivy and Gus and Ian. We pray special prayers for Chrissy and Brody, and we also pray for Kelsey, Barbara, Paul and Lorraine, and for June. 
to pray for Beryl and Ray and Phil and Bob. For Jan and Wall. For Faye. For Pearly. For Kathy. For Shaquille. For Denzel. For Jessica. And for Nancy. We also pray for Jane. And for all those in need of prayer but who have not made known their requests. We pray for them and we bring the people of Nariwara North and the people from the communities where you live, we bring them to you. So God of glory, hear our prayer. And now in the language you are most comfortable with, let us together pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. And save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our notices this week, next Sunday, of course, third Sunday of the month is our contemplative service. So if you're attending our online service, make sure you have your candle with you so that you can light prayers at home for people you know in need of prayer. Uh, next Tuesday, the 13th of July, is Church Council at 7.30 at the church. And next Wednesday, the 14th of July, uh, groups will resume at the church. They will be socially distanced, etc. QR codes need to sign on and all the COVID uh, restrictions will be adhered to. So we hope to see you at our groups or perhaps at church next week. So our hymn now is We Have a Gospel to Proclaim.
in following Christ's mission. Be aware of difficulties that may arise and face them with courage and faith, with humility and grace, and look at all things through the cross of Jesus that goes before you. And the blessing. Go out and live lives that glorify God. Act with integrity. Do not sell yourself out to delusions or give your word deceitfully. Stand up for the truth and rejoice in the Lord. And may God give you all the blessings of heaven. May Christ Jesus gather you into his family. And may the Holy Spirit deliver you safely into the rich destiny prepared for God's people. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. And our final hymn is May the Feet of God Walk With You. Well, thank you for joining us today. We wish you all a blessed week. God's blessings are always upon us. So thank you for joining us. And we will see you next week for our contemplative service. Bye for now. Bye.